So would you say then for you, relationships are the number one driver and it's not about hours, yeah, quantity of clients, it's really about your relationships? Jamie Ben Isri is all over social media and we understand the work he is doing for entrepreneurs, but we don't know much about him personally. In this episode, Jamie shares his grandfather's history of survival and relationships built on a handshake. We connect how this has been instrumental in Jamie's mindset today. I think it goes back to, to business 101, the way, that, the, way my, the way that my grandfather built a business when he got off the boat. What did he do? So he was in Shumata business, opened some, some lady, lady, lady clothing stores, Rapontini in the East End and a little bit all over the place. And you shake hands, they didn't have contracts back then. You know, there was no need for lawyers. You know, my grandfather came here with no food and no really? money. Right? So how, like, did he, how did he start a business like that? I have so much respect for people who immigrate anywhere. And I have so many clients. Plus he was a survivor, so he had all of this trauma. Like how yeah, did he yeah. even so, pull so you himself have, up you have, amazing? So, I mean, it's, it's amazing. So, you know, you, you know, everybody, you know, victimizes themselves about, you know, it's so hard to be in this generation. And put things into perspective, okay? Like, it's not how many likes you have doesn't matter um, it was much worse for a lot of other people and it could always be worse and I think that the fact that I've tried to pay you know a, a homage to my grandfather and that era and you know he came here completely lost out of the war was liberated when you know the Red Cross comes in and um, he he didn't know where to go. He had no, you know, his family, his, his entire family was annihilated. And the Red Cross comes in and he doesn't know where to go. So what does he do? He, uh, he, he, he writes a letter to his cousin. He remembers his name. And he thinks that he lives in Canada. So he writes his name and he writes Canada. Oh my and he God. gives it to the Red Cross. And he said, could you please bring this to my cousin in Canada? Did it end up in his cousin's Yeah, the hand? cousin, you know, oh my God. the cousin Gaia, he gets the letter and, oh my God. And, uh, and he ends up, you know, he ends up bringing him in here and like, so, and, and these, there's so many stories like this, right? And, and, and then he, he just, he just hustled. And I said that, you know, those are the original hustlers, the, the guys that, that had a chutzpah that were, you know, where it was a matter of life and death. And they forged unbelievable relationships. I mean, and the keys, when I look at, when I look at his boys club and the way that he forged relationships, I mean, it, it was only, you had your reputation, you had your word, you shook hands and you took 50,000 units from Chabanel and you went out and you sold them. And his wife was in the back on the sewing machine, like Rumpelstiltskin, trying to create, you know, women's clothing out of, out of, out of schmata, out of rags. Mm -hmm. So, and that, that, applies, that applies today. There's only, social media will only take you so far. So, you know, Jamie, the stakes are different, obviously, for you than they were for your grandfather. You have first world problems. He had real yeah, world problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when my iPhone freezes, I'm, I'm like, I'm upset. 100%. <laughs> you know? 100%. I get mad. But you realize that the way you described your grandfather is you. I spent so much time with him growing up. We, we you know, we, I, had, I had the best relationship with him. My fondest memories of him when, is when I was in bar school. And I was in Montreal. And I was living at his place in, uh, in Cote Luc. We were just like, you know, two bachelors trying to figure out like, you know, how to cook things. <laughs> I was like, you know, who's making dinner tonight? And we used to like, you know, we just sit around the table, you know, having beers and just like, you know, talking about life. And, and then those were some of my fondest memories. I think I've always tried to emulate uh, his family values and his, um, uh, the fact that reputation was so important to him. And, you know, his heritage was so important to him that, you know, he would walk around, you know, tattoo on his arm and, you know, tell people stories, you know, anywhere we would go. You know, I remember traveling with him. He was telling people his stories. And not because he wanted to be famous, not because he wanted recognition for surviving a war or, or an, atro an atrocity, but just because it was important for him to convey and to, you know, remind people that this is still happening. But that's like, exactly what you're doing, but in a different avenue. You're uh, telling yeah. stories to help people and remind them and inspire yeah. them. It's just, you are your grandfather. Uh, maybe, yeah, I guess I am. It's so lovely. I guess I am, yeah.